Hello everyone, thanks for joining me on It's a Grey Matter, Breaking News Edition. On this episode, we're wrapping up our findings on anxiety and depression in the gut-brain axis and suggesting possible treatments based on those findings. First, for our takeaway. Brian, that's not what I meant by takeaway. Why not? Because takeaway is a figure of speech. Now give me back the brain and go. I said you could wander around the studio if you behave. Taking my brain is not behaving. Fine. Or see you at tomorrow's meeting. Thank you. I'll see you then. Okay, so our takeaways are that bacteria has a large role in creating neurotransmitters, such as bacteroides and lactobacillus for GABA and enterococcus for dopamine. Other bacteria on the more ill-intended, no pun intended, side can cause infection and further increase gut permeability and then the inflammatory response, including Prevotella, Escherichia, and Clostridium. Other disturbances can come from an HPA axis in overdrive, which sends cortisol all over the system and can override the vagus nerve's regulation of the stress response and inflammation, resulting in an inflamed and leaky gut. Some researchers think that the response comes from excess CPK at CCK2 receptors in the amygdala, which activates the amygdala and stimulates the HPA axis. CCK's proximity to serotonin-3 receptors in the amygdala may suggest competition, especially with excitatory and inhibitory signals. Cytokines like interleukin-6 and interleukin-1-beta further spur on the stress response, decreasing negative feedback from the hippocampus. This hyperactivity can result in both anxiety and depression, depending on how long the stress response carries on. The only true difference in the gut for anxiety and depression is that in anxiety disorders, glutamate is present alongside cortisol, but in depression, it's not present. Otherwise, both disorders have a reduction in GABA and dopamine contributing to similar symptoms, hypothesized to come from their respective metabolizing bacteria, bacteroides, and enterococcus. Psychologists would agree with the similarities, citing a roughly 65% comorbidity rate between the two, and suggest bridging, involving comorbidity rising from overlapping symptoms. We've explored both disorders since feelings of unease and depression have significant correlations with overall gastrointestinal symptoms. So what can we do? Results for probiotics are mixed, but mixed results may come from different strains. So it's a matter of finding the right bacterium. Since bacteria often have to cross the brain's blood-brain barrier along with neurotransmitter precursors, we would want a bacterium capable of crossing that barrier. Lactobacillus has produced several positive results in treatment of both anxiety and depression. Bacteroides has played a part in treatment testing, but has not provided results. While some studies have suggested incorporating hormones such as oxytocin and progesterone, trials with these hormones have not shown much difference. So, progesterone and oxytocin have some potential in theory, but lactobacillus has shown the most potential in studies. Based on the literature, we'd want to focus most of our efforts on developing lactobacillus as probiotic. Thanks for coming with me on this series on the enteric nervous system. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next series, and I'll see you next time on It's a Gray Matter. Mm -hmm.